Good morning students. Let's begin with the first session of your class 10. This year for your chemistry we will be having four chapters. Okay. The first chapter chemical reactions and equation. Second one we have acids, bases and salt. Third metals and non-metals. And last one it's quite new to you that is carbon and carbon compounds. Okay, and first three chapters at least, it's, uh, these three chapters are familiar to you, already you have learned in your lower classes. Yes, so uh, let's begin with the first chapter and we'll be seeing which concepts we'll be learning in that chapter. Okay, so the first chapter which we have that is chemical reactions and equations. Chemical reactions and equations. By the name of the chapter only, we, we can easily identify that we will be learning different types of reactions and equations. So what exactly we are going to learn in this chapter? Let's see. First one, we will be learning about some changes that are happening around us. There are many changes happening around us and what are the, the types of changes happening around us? We will be learning in this chapter. The second concept which we will be learning is about chemical reactions. Chemical reactions. And these chemical reactions will easily be, we can be present in the form of chemical equations. That will be the third part of the chapter. That is the third concept. That is write, how to write the equations, how to balance the equations, how, how, how we are going to write coefficients for balancing notifications like solids, liquid. All these we will be learning in the third part of the chapter. The next part of the chapter, that is fourth part, we will be learning the different types of chemical reactions. There are combinations or uh, decomposition, displacement, we have single displacement, double displacement. There are different types of reactions that we will be learning in the fourth type of uh, fourth concept. That is the fourth part of the chapter. And last part, actually it's deleted, but also we have this in your third chapter, that is metals and non-metals. So we will be considering this topic that is corrosion and rancidity. So we have these two concepts which we will be learning together. So these are the concepts which we will be learning in chapter 1 that is chemical reactions and equations. Now I will show you some simple practical children. Every time orally when I speak it does, it does come to your mind. So I have a single piece of paper. Okay. And uh, just look at this. I am just going to tear this paper. Is there any major happening here? Nothing. One hand, simple, if I tear this paper, in my right hand I have paper, right, left hand, or right and left hand if you observe, I have paper, a piece of paper. Nothing new is formed. So such type of changes, when nothing new is formed, are called as physical changes. There are many changes happening in, around, in and around our children. So these changes are mainly classified as physical and chemical. So the first change where you will find nothing new is formed, those changes are called as physical changes. Whereas there are some changes, I'll just show one simple reaction. If, I, if just we burn this piece of paper, is that going to, well let's see, you can just observe. Yeah, just have a look. Can you find something black or something new or just check, you only can see. You can see that part of the paper, yeah, still it's burning. You can see some changes. Is the black color ash form or the black color part is equal to the paper or something new is formed? You can easily find that different gases, gases are released as well as the black color substance. It's really new one. It's not the paper which we had burned uh, earlier. So here you can find something new is formed. So that type of changes are called as chemical changes wherein something new is formed. Now if I tear this paper, okay, can I join this with gum or okay fine, we can just get it back. We can get uh, or in some cases like if ice cube, if we melt any ice cream or your ice cube melts, we have a simple ice cube and just we keep it outside in the normal temperature, you will find it melts. Only the state of the matter changes, solid changes into liquid. Only the state of matter changes. Here you will not find anything new. 
ice cube is also water the content in it is water and the product form is also water here nothing new is formed and also again if i want to reverse it i'm going to take this liquid water and again if i keep it back into the ice tray i'm going to get that ice cube back yes or no yes so here in this case where i uh, the changes which can be reversible the word used is reversible reverse is nothing but we can get it back something uh, we can go uh, but it's back let me have a the r symbol on the vehicle or showing the gear yes the reverse when the vehicle can be brought back in the reverse direction in the opposite direction same way this word also means what getting it back once we have got the product we can get a product we have got water we can get back into the solid state by freezing it yes or no so such type of changes are called as physical changes Wherein here I have burned a piece of paper, or you can take example of a burning candle. Okay, if I burn, if I light this candle, you will find there are two changes happening simultaneously. If I burn this candle, if I light this candle, two changes will happen simultaneously. What is going to happen? First, you will find smoke is released. That means the wick inside that it it will burn. Yes or no? We have two changes happening simultaneously. That is burning of candle and melting of wax. So wax melting or melting of wax is for a physical change because once the wax falls down, again it's cool, it gets cooled down and you will get the wax, the solid wax back. But as the wick burns, it uh, you will find it gets shortened. You will not get that wick back. So your the Processes are happening simultaneously when we light the candle. That is physical change as well as chemical change. So if you have to keep in mind, in a chemical change, the product which is formed, the product, the substance which is formed, it is a new substance. It is a totally new substance. As when when I have burned this paper, we got the black color ash. Yes, when we burn incense stick, we get the black uh, ash. We don't. We don't get that incense. We cannot convert that ash back into the incense stick. Agar but we cannot convert it back. Yes, you know. So here we can. Uh, the first part of this chapter is about changes, and we are not going to study anything about physical changes because obviously nothing new is formed here. We are more uh, interested, or we are more going. We are going to focus on chemical changes because in chemical changes, new substance is formed. Okay. Uh, if we discuss different examples in our household, obviously in chemistry lab there will be new substances uh, forming. But in our house, uh, let's begin with the morning routine. As soon as we get up, we brush our teeth. Chemical change. We bath. Chemical change. Yes, we wash clothes. The dirt removed from our body. The dirt removed, which is removed from our clothes. That is chemical change. In ma mummy preparing food in the kitchen. Chemical change. Yes. There are uh, then uh, milk curdling of milk. Chemical change. If mummy is preparing egg beads, dosas from night time she starts preparing the batter. So night time the batter ferments. That is also a kind of chemical change. So your children, you will keep in mind that n number of changes are happening around us, and those changes can be classified as physical changes and chemical changes. Now further, we are going to study. Okay, or we are going to see where this uh, chemical changes is related to chemical reaction. So keep in mind wherever chemical changes are happening. Like for example, right now the plants or the trees which are there outside standing stuff still, you can find each and every leaf is absorbing the sunlight and preparing food. Each leaf is a kitchen for the plant. It's a kitchen for the tree. It's preparing food. It's absorbing light and it's preparing. Food. So that is also it absorbs or the reactants which are used. Those are totally different. Yes, sunlight is used, carbon dioxide is used, and the products which is given out they give us oxygen. So the product which is given out that is also totally different. So here again we have this is one of the the food which we eat in the morning children. Or now if something is there in our stomach like morning you had breakfast, that breakfast also is getting digested into the stomach. that is also a type of chemical change so somewhere where something new is formed respiration we breathe in oxygen 
we give out carbon dioxide that is also a type of chemical change wherever you find any anywhere anywhere where chemical changes uh, is uh, happening or taking place you can say that there chemical reaction is taken place anywhere wherever chemical changes are happening we can say that chemical reaction is taken place there so what exactly is a chemical reaction chemical reaction is nothing but when two or more reactants okay when two or more reactants they combine to form products when two or more reactants combine to form products and these new these products are the new products new products means they do not have any properties any properties constitute any nothing the product will be such a different product it will not have any properties of the constituent reactants yes for example i have hydrogen plus oxygen gives water yes i we have known this since 6 uh, standard that hydrogen gas combines with oxygen gas and it gives it gives water look at the difference hydrogen gas is highly inflammable yes it uh, it catches fire by its own oxygen gas is the supporter of burning process it's a supporter burn jab wherever you find any um, any fire it, it's a fire of uh, burning wherever you find any burning that means oxygen gas is supporting and we have learned the practical also when gas is glass is inverted the candle gets extinguished because of no air or no uh, gas into it so same way oxygen gas is we can say that it is a supporter of the burning process so when these two gases combine we get a such a new product which is a such a new product it does not have any properties of the constituent reacting let's see Ox, uh, is that oxo hydrogen anywhere it's used to burn in the burning process is it used in the cylinder it is used in, no no way actually if you observe it is it has the uh, totally opposite properties of the reactants yes oxygen uh, hydrogen is used for the extinguishing purpose wherever fire in fire is there wherever you find it catches fire we pour water for it. yes or no so look at this this shows that this is the best example which shows that you know, the product which is formed it is such a it's a really new product and it does not have any properties of the reactants constituent reactants so these are uh, keep in mind and uh, for by this you have to just remember here what uh, by completing this concept you will remember that two or more reactants when they combine to form products that is called as a chemical reaction and how are the products products are the new products with a uh, new properties which does not match up with the properties of the constituent reactants then we will go on to the next one okay next topic we have completed about two changes can you tell me which are the two main types of changes physical changes and chemical changes we have learned that physical changes in physical changes nothing new is formed they are uh, reversible whereas chemical changes are yes chemical changes and the chemical changes new product is formed whereas they are irreversible next one why they are reversible because the product which is formed that is a new product next one we have chemical reactions chemical reactions are the reactions in which two or more uh, reactants combine to form products next one we have chemical equations let's see what is chem chemical equation so when i now when i am saying that look at the plants they are they are preparing food it's a such a long process when i am describing they absorb sunlight they are taking a uh, carbon dioxide water from the underground and when i describe it's going to be so confusing you get so confused now simple let's take a simple example in a house when as soon as we get up in the morning the first chemical reaction happening in our house is tea making yes or no when i uh, when i want to explain someone how tea is prepared so in, instead of telling take a uh, beaker or a vessel add a tea powder simply i can say that you can just Uh, what actually is the simplest process tea powder we have sugar yes plus water and if uh, so if you are interested you can add elaichi and all whatever cardamom any spices and all and we get one cup of or whatever we desire desired number of cups of teas 
T. Yes or no? So in your children, you can say that simply if, if looking at this reaction easily, you can say if even for, for standard child also will understand what I have to add in tea making process. I can just, uh, the child will understand tea, sugar, water. These three are the main ingredients for the tea making process. So but what, what actually I have told you now, this is called as a chemical equation. Chemical equation is nothing but it is a symbolic representation of chemical reaction. So whatever ha is happening in a chemical reaction, it is represented in a chemical equation. But in a short form way, in a very short form. Like for example, now just now I took example of water that is hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas gives water. Yes, this is the instead of telling that hydrogen gas combines with oxygen gas instead of giving a big uh, big lecture or big description we can easily write that as hydrogen plus oxygen gives water so here easily you can identify that uh, there are two reactants used up here to form a single product that is water now here whichever equation i have written it is in the word form so this type of equation is called as a word equation. Why it is called as a word equation? Because every uh, every chemical or chemical component I have written in the form of word. Hydrogen, oxygen, water. But same if I write in the form of symbols, in the, in the symbolic form. So look at this. Hydrogen, okay, plus oxygen is O2 and water is H2. This is just a symbolic representation, but in a rough form. I have written a rough form. So this type of equation is called as skeletal equation. Skeletal equation. Further now, children. Okay. Further. Before I start the further part, I just uh, want to tell you: if I add one cup of water and one teaspoon of um, tea powder and two teaspoon of sugar, I have taken this proportion, am I going to get 100 cups of tea? No. How many reactants I am going to take? If I want to prepare uh, one, uh, whatever, if I am going to take 1 kg of rice, is that I am going to, after cooking it will be 10 kg or 100 kg of rice? No. Whatever reactants I am going to take, whatever ingredients I am going to take, approximately that many amount of products I am going to get. Yes or no? Same thing applies in chemistry. Okay? How many reactants we have added? Where after uh, after getting react after completion of reaction, the products which we are going to get, it's going to be exactly same. And that is stated in a law which is called as law of conservation of mass. Law of conservation of mass, which states that mass of the reactant should be equal to the products. Reactants, how many, uh, uh, how many uh, number of atoms we have in the reactant side, that many uh, number of atoms should be there in the product side. Okay, and if it is not equal, we are going to balance it. So this reaction which I have written which is unbalanced, that is called as skeletal equation. Now when I am going to balance it, I am going to get a balanced equation. Now, how are we going to balance it? Let's check out. I have the reaction H2 plus O2 gives H2. Okay, just have a look. And we are going to divide this. This is a symbolic representation of the chemical reaction of water formation. So, when hydrogen and oxygen combine, they form water. So, in this case, children, how many, react, how many number of atoms we have uh, in the reactant side? That many number of uh, atoms we should have in the product side. So your reactants and products are separated by this arrowhead which shows the direction of the arrow. Which shows the direction of the arrow. That means it shows the direction that the reactants will combine and they are going to form products. Okay, so what do we have in a chemical equation? We have the reactants, we have products and the arrowhead which shows the direction of the reaction. Further we have 
If n is the action in any of the reaction beats at the release, the reaction will be, the direction will be in the upper direction, or the arrow direction will be in the upper one. And if the arrow is in the downward direction, it shows the precipitation reaction that will be learning further children. Now here, let's see how to balance it. It's very easier. Last year also I have learned it. Once again, we'll be separating the reactant side and the product side. So have a look. How many number of if you first have to check how many number of atoms do we have in each of the uh, of each of the element? Like for example, your hydrogen we have two atoms. Two atoms should be there in the product side. Here we have two atoms. Obviously, two are there in the product side. That means hydrogen now atom is like uh, indeed hydrogen at least is this this balance. Second one I will observe oxygen. Here oxygen atoms we have two. That side if you observe that there we have one atom. So what is our uh, our step? Or what are we going to do? We are going to add a number two. That is that is considered this number two is called as a coefficient. In ninth standard we have learned this should. And again why can't we add two here? We are uh, because you will say that this is the the only two hydro oxygen and we need to balance only oxygen, so we'll write two here. We can't write it because already the product is formed. So we are not going to write two here. We'll be writing in the coefficient as a coefficient, and this two will be common for hydrogen as well as oxygen. So now hydrogen, how many atoms we have? Two, two are four. Oxygen, how many atoms do we have? Oxygen, we have two atoms. I will have four atoms. Now let's check out our, again. Is it balanced? No. Your will if I add two, if I'm just going to multiply this hydrogen atom or molecule by two, it will be two, two or four. Now it's balanced. Here we have four hydrogen atom. That side we have four hydrogen atom. Here we see oxygen we had balanced earlier. So two oxygen atom, two oxygen atom. So this way we have balanced the reaction. Balancing of the reaction is quite easier. Only you have to see the number of atoms in the right hand side as well as in the product side that is left hand side. After this, you have to keep in mind, you will be writing the, when you are writing the chemical equation, there are some set of rules. After balancing, you need to write the state in which the uh, molecule is involved in the reaction. For example, hydrogen, is it in the solid state or in the gas, gas state? Obviously, we know that hydrogen is, is, a, is a gas. So we'll be writing G here, and your oxygen is a gas. Water is it a gas? No. So water we get in a liquid state. So we will be writing L. If the uh, constituent reactants or products are in the solid state, we will be writing S. If it is in the liquid state, we'll be writing L. If it is in the gas state, we'll be writing G. And if anything is in water, we'll be writing AQ. Okay. Uh, now students, so for today we will be, we have completed the three concepts. In the next session, we will be completing the reverse. We will be starting with the very important and easiest part that is types of reactions. Let's uh, revise, uh, let's uh, recall and just, uh, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Can you tell me uh, what, how many types of changes do we have? Two. Where there, which are the two main types of changes? Chemical, Chemical changes. Very good. Uh, can you tell me um, what actually is in the change? I'm just you have to tell me one word, okay? The change in which a new product is formed. Chemical change. A change in which, uh, which can be reversible. Very good. Curdling of milk. Curdling of milk, that means curd formation or uh, milk if you keep for longer hours without boiling it. So what mm -hmm. what which type of change is this? Yeah. Digestion, yeah. Yeah. Uh, rottening of uh, anything, yeah. rotting yeah. something that gets spoiled. Yeah. Then uh, washing clothes, yeah. cutting of wood, physical yeah. change. Yes, cutting hair, cut, give a nice hair, spike hair, just setting your hair into spikes or any good hair style if you do. Setting of hair, just you have set hair with a gel, with a type of gel. What it is? Physical change. Okay, did you did you get the correct me, uh, difference between physical and change? I hope so you have understood. Further children, you have to keep in mind, chemical, wherever chemical changes are happening, you have to keep in mind the the chemical reaction is up. Wherever it is happening, wherever you find cordoning of milk, respiration, digestion, these processes are chemical changes. 
wherever chemical changes are happening, you have to keep in mind there chemical changes taken place. Yes, chemical change has taken place or chemical reaction has taken place. So chemical reaction is, uh, is also we can say represent the chemical reaction in an easy form. Easy form means what symbolic form or in a word form. So that uh, form is called as equation form. It is called as chemical equation. So exactly how you will be describing symbolic representation of a chemical reaction is chemical equation. It, if I write in a word form, it is a word equation. In your exam, they may ask you, you have to write in a word equation, skeletal equation, balance the equation. So uh, this is, if I write in a symbolic form, formula form, that is called as Skeletal equation. Skeletal. Our body is made up of skeleton. Yes or not? Base, base is skeleton. So skeletal equation. And if I balance it, why do we balance it? This is a guaranteed question. Many a times it is asked children. Why do we balance equation? Because of law of conservation of mass. Which states that mass can neither be created nor it can be destroyed. You have learned in class 9. And also number of atoms should, of the reactant side should be equal to number of products. We have learned the balancing. Further, we will, in the next session, I'll give you a few more examples. We'll be learning for balancing, how, how to balance them. Now, this was a simple reaction, but we also will be considering the uh, different reactions where we have the diatomic, triatomic uh, elements. Further, types of reaction, corrosion and transitivity, we'll be learning in the next session. I hope so you have understood, children. Thank you.